This porridge is too hot. This porridge is too cold. This porridge is still pretty hot, but let's give it a shot. All right, not bad. The Mossberg 590 A1 short barreled shotgun. So you might see what we have here. The, uh, the hot porridge, of course, was the Shockwave, which uh, you have no stock. So, uh, I, you know, I say that, but uh, this actually recoils, feels like it recoils more because when you shoot this, it kind of absorbs it because you're holding in your arms, but obviously you can't be as uh, precise with it. And then we've got the full size 590, 590, 590 A1 up here uh, for the full length. So, 14 inch barrel on both of these. Uh, this is, I believe, uh, I know it's over 18. I uh, should have asked that before the video, but I believe it is a 20. Uh, give me a nod if it is. Okay, it's a 20. I always think of combat shotguns as being an 18, but I knew this one was a little bit slightly longer. So 20 inch barrel uh, and then 14 on both of these. And the major difference being between the this one and that one is that you can't just buy this one over the counter in a store, which we'll talk about some more. All of that. All right, let's uh, shoot this thing a few more times. Let's uh, let's put in. What is this? Okay, buckshot. Yes, is this double a buck? A oh, four four buck. All right. Hopefully this uh, isn't too punishing. It's uh, it surprises me how much of a difference. Um, in recoil you actually get with the the shorter barrel i mean obviously you have you know you have more weight there's more steel on the end of this of this shotgun but it wouldn't it didn't seem like it would make that much of a difference i mean this thing pops you a little more than i expected but i mean it's very very manageable I mean, it's very manageable it's just more than i thought it would be okay let's go ahead and uh, shoot this target before i forget let's see what kind of pattern we get All right, let's put one more on it. Not too bad. Let's go ahead and take out this watermelon right here. <laughs> Not much left of that. Let's uh, get the green two liter. All right. Oh, we got one more. Let's see. Uh, let's get the that case of Tide Pods down there. Something tells me there might be water in it. Yep, just as I suspected. And also, 590A1 short barreled shotgun, otherwise known as an SBS. So, as I mentioned earlier, you can't just purchase this, you know, over the counter, as, as they say. You can't just, um, you know, buy one from a guy, or I mean, I guess technically you could, if you're, but it'd be illegal. Um, you can't just buy one and take it home the same day from a gun shop, unfortunately, because of the National Firearms Act of 19. 34. Uh, one of the uh, big things that took away a lot of our gun rights. I encourage you to read more about it. This is not a video on all of that, but I just want to make you aware if you don't know that this falls under that because it has a it is a shotgun with a stock that has a barrel length of under 18 inches. It is 14, so four inches underneath. I always thought it would be funny to go through the process of uh, getting a tax stamp. You know, you got to pay $200 for a tax stamp. You gotta do all this, you know, you gotta wait forever for it to, for it to go through and everything. Uh, uh, but just have a, like a 17 and a half inch barrel. I think that would be really fun. Just, you know, cause 18 is the limit. Just go 17 and a half. Most of the time, because of, because it's so much to go through on a, on a short barrel shotgun or a short barrel rifle, they go ahead and make them pretty short. Like I've seen some even much shorter than this. Uh, I don't think I've seen anything, uh, this, it's an SBS that's really longer than 14 inches. This is kind of the starting point usually when, when you go through that process to cut down a barrel, but uh, someone needs to do a 17 inch barrel. It'd be pretty funny. All right, let's load it up again. Shoot it some more. Let's see what we got. So we got bird shot here, slug. Let's go ahead and do some slugs. If I remember correctly, this thing shoots notoriously high. So I'm about to do some um, adjustments on the uh, 
and the front bead. But I'd definitely rather it shoot high than low. All right. I guess this won't hold five since these are, the shells are just like a little bit longer, I guess. All right. Let's start out on the gong. I'm gonna aim underneath it and we'll see what happens. Okay, it didn't go as low as I thought it would. Or as uh, high as I thought it would. Didn't see that one. Okay, same higher. All right, try that again. Figure out where this thing is going. All right, that says they're going high. So let's try aiming lower. I remember when we shot this earlier, they were all going high, it seems like. That's one thing that's tough about a bead sight if you're trying to shoot precision with slugs, is uh, you, you have basically, you have no, oh, this, I think I already got five in it. Yeah, you have, um, you have no rear sight. Okay. So your sight picture is a little different every time if you're not careful. All right, I'm just going to hold right on the middle of it. We can't see where it's going. All right, got to try something different, I guess. Uh, let's try the red square over on the left. Hold under it, see if we can see a splash. I didn't see that either. Oh, jeez. Okay, so it is going way, all right, so it's going, so for some reason, I guess on the first round, I guess I pulled it or something, and it gave me a really unrealistic idea of how high it's going, so it is going very high, okay, all right, we'll get it dialed in. Okay. I'm gonna hold way under it. All right, hit just to the bottom corner of it. Bring up a little more. Not high enough. There we go. Hit it right in the middle. All right, we figured it out. <laughs> the process of elimination. Okay, so it shoots very high. So if you get one of these, that's something to be aware of. All right, let's shoot some uh, some buckshot. Two hands to do this. So the the 590 is of course a staple of the uh, pump shotgun world. I would argue is probably even though I love the 870, the the uh, Remington 870. Um, you know, I'd probably argue that it's maybe the best pump shotgun. I know it um, famously did really, really well in the military trials. You know, this thing has been used in the military, you know, basically ever since it came out in, in uh, 1962. It's just a very strong, robust gun. Also really quickly, um, so it's an A1. So with the 590A1, you get the metal trigger guard. And see on the shockwave, I thought initially when I first got this that it was basically a shockwave with a stock on it, you know, with you know, as a stamped uh, SBS. But uh, it's not exactly the same because it has more of the A1 characteristics. You can see more of the parkerization here on the, on the barrel, I believe, and even and especially on the magazine tube. But you get the uh, metal trigger guard, and then you also have the metal safety, uh, which, which is pretty cool. And um, these things are considered to be very robust. I mean, alloy receiver, but still like a very, very robust uh, shotgun. All right. I think I put a slug in there. All right, let's take out this watermelon. Uh, 
let's get this uh, bowling pin here. Uh, let's get the orange too later. Alright. Let's do some more. Let's see. Let's do some more slugs. Yeah, these things are a lot of fun. It's it's really not not too bad on recoil. Kind of oversold it early on in the video, but you do notice a difference when you shoot this thing. And a lot of people have uh, trashed these um, these shock waves. You know, basically saying you can't hit anything with them. I mean, there's obviously an advantage to having the the full length stock. But at close range, I don't necessarily feel like I can shoot this thing just like way better than I can with this. Now, when it comes to, except for the first like 80 shots I took over there, um, you know, with shooting stuff on the other hill with slugs, I mean, that, that'd be a real challenge with one of these. So obviously having the stock is pretty important. Um, but ideally, these things are just legal and you can have a folding stock and you have the best of both worlds. Okay, let's shoot this uh, big water jug here. Take it out. All right, let's get the other orange two liter. Okay, let's go back over on the gong. See if I can hit it this time. If I can kind of remember how much I need to hold down. All right, let's try. Uh, let's try the buffalo over there. I'm gonna try holding at the at his feet, basically. See if that's enough. Buffalo on the left. Oh, look at that, still went over his back. Crazy. All right, well, I guess that's enough shooting with the Mossberg uh, 590A1 SBS. You know, these are really neat guns. It's a, it's a shame that you have to go through all the stuff that comes with, you know, a gun being uh, an NFA firearm, being under 18 inches you know, per the current um, federal laws in the United States over these things, you know, and that's another thing too I wanted to touch on. I'm not an expert on it, but just to make you guys aware of it. Um, if you're good, now this would be obviously a great home defense shotgun on paper, but because of the fact that it's an NFA firearm, um, using one of these in a home defense situation, it could make it more, could make it more complicated. Maybe not, maybe not, I don't know. Um, there's really not a lot of, um, data that I, that I could find on that. I mean, it'd be nice to feel comfortable using an NFA firearm uh, for self-defense because, you know, it's shorter, easier to manipulate. I mean, I would rather have this than, than this if, uh, for, for home defense, but I can't, um, you know, with a lot of confidence say that like there wouldn't be some sort of um, negative, there wouldn't be like a negative side to it, you know, once you went to court on something like that, just because it's in a, different category and just the way it's seen all that kind of stuff and um you know maybe some of you guys you know watching know more about it you can comment below you've had experience with it or or something like that but, but that's something that's very interesting to me as i'm kind of getting into more of the of the nfa stuff but again on top of that there would be a huge reason uh to try to get this stuff off of the nfa so that it's seen exactly the same as you know this 18 inch five nine but anyways there you go the 590 a1 SBS, um, you know, this is a gun that, uh, you know, we have, you know, in our possessions on our trust and uh, you'll see it around again, I'm sure. We'll do some more videos with it. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Uh, all right. It's a long walk from where I had to shoot that. Oh, man. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Since you're here, I want to let you know about our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. TalonGunGrips.com. Check out everything they have over there. You can get lots of different grips, the stick-on grip textures for your handguns and rifle grips. So go check them out. Also, Ballastall. They're a firearms lubricant or anything else you might need lubricating. Uh, it's water-soluble and non-toxic. Been using it on the compound and cleaning all of our guns. It's a cleaner and a lube for over 10 years. So Ballastall, Talon Grips, definitely check both of those companies out. And also, while you're on the internet, don't forget to go to Hickok45.com. You can also find us on 
Facebook, Hickok45, Twitter, Hickok45, Instagram, The Real Hickok45, and also I have an Instagram page where I post behind the scenes stuff and different things like that. John, J O H N underscore H I C K O K 45 on Instagram. And uh, the next thing you have to do is watch more videos.